Hi! In this tutorial we're going to see how Dolby Vision is implemented in Mystica Boutique or Mystica Ultima. The first step, of course, is the license. The license must be provided by Dolby and must be placed in the right folder and with the right name. Just to show what happens when you don't have a license, I'm going to insert a Dolby Vision effect. And as you can see, a new window appears with instructions for installing the license. Without the license, the effect can be used for performing the analysis but not for controlling the trims. Alright, so let's place the license file in the right folder. In my case, I've just renamed it to show what happened without the license. So I've recovered the original name and then I will restart Mystica. With Mystica running, we can start the Dolby Vision workflow. As you can see, we have some shots already graded in PQ, P3 at 4000 nits. Obviously, it's really important to know exactly all the color aspects of our environment to achieve a proper result with Dolby Vision. First thing I'm going to do is to group the segments to have a cleaner timeline. Now is the moment to go here to Edit, Setup, and here you will find a new option called Dolby Manager. Let's click it to open. Here we have several options. By default, internal CMU is running and is the one that we are going to use in this case. In case that we have an external CMU connected, we will see that option here. Nothing changed really from the operational perspective. What we will have is the same settings here, but with the name of the connected CMU. The most important option here is the master monitor and target monitor. As we said before, we have used a 4000 nits monitor for our master grading in P3 and PQ. And now we want to make the transformation to another color settings, for example, to 100 nits and 709. So basically, we are transforming from HDR to HDR. I'm going to use this option because probably all of you are watching this tutorial in a standard display, and the transformation from HDR to SDR is much more obvious visually than moving between different HDR settings. So we close this window, and now is the moment to add the Dolby Vision effects. It's really important to apply the Dolby Vision effects on top of our stacks, except in the case of a dissolve. In this situation, the dissolve goes on top to make the interpolation between these two Dolby Vision effects. Ok, so let's start by analyzing the shots. We have two ways to do it. The first one is going shot by shot. As you can see in here, there is an analysis folder, so we need to go to the first frame of the shot, click here in perform, and press play. The image changed the color just to warning you that it's making the analysis. Once it's finished, as you can see, automatically we have a color change. Dolby Vision is transforming the signal from PQP3 at 4000 nits to Rec709 at 100 nits which by default is the active trim. By the way, you will always have a 100 nits trim in your Dolby Vision projects when exporting the metadata, even if you select another target or change here the setting to other value. This is a standard rule for Dolby Vision. The other way to make the analysis to the whole project is selecting these two values and propagate to other clips. Then we can just play my timeline and this will make, automatically, the analysis. So now all my clips have been analyzed. But the analysis in one of the shots is wrong. It's this shot here with the letterbox. This analysis is wrong because it has considered the black areas as part of the image. So we need to specify that this shot has letterbox. We can do it in two ways. If my whole project has letterbox, we can go again to the Dolby Manager and here select the aspect ratio or just click in custom and add our own value. In this case, because it's only one shot, instead of using the global mode, I'm going to select this shot option. And I'm going to put the right aspect ratio for that. Now we'll run the analysis again. And now we have the right values for this shot. Now let's use the trims. With the trims we can adjust the image to make it look as close as possible to our master image. We have several options here, 
to make a primary grading to adjust our clips. We can create several trims for more delivered targets. Just remember to not duplicate trims as it's not allowed in this workflow. If you do it, Mystica will show a warning message the moment that you export the metadata. And it will select the clips with that error. If we want to see the results of one specific target, we have to select it in the Dolby Manager. So for example, if we create a 600 nits version, we won't see the change because the selected target display is the one for 100 nits. So we need to go back to our Dolby Manager and then select the 600 nits. Now we see the right image. If we select 600 nits as a target, but we only have a 100 nits stream, Mystica will interpolate the values from the 100 nits stream to 600 nits in the output. So basically, between the target monitor and the trim, if the selected value is different, Mystica will make the interpolation automatically. Another important detail that we need to keep in mind is that all the shots must be analyzed in order to export. And we cannot leave blank areas between shots. If we want to add some kind of blank space between shots, we need to add a black solid and analyze it with a Dolby Vision effect. One important feature of Mystica that can be applied in this workflow is the possibility of muting the Dolby Vision effects only for the left eye or the right eye. So with a proper reader board, we can just split the signal. In one monitor, we will have the 4000 nits version. And in the other one, we'll have the 100 nits SDR version. And of course, we will be able to play them at the same time. So the grading will be much easier. Once we finish, we can just disable the bypass and export our Dolby Vision metadata. We have two options, export only the metadata or render the clips with the metadata. If we want to export only the metadata, we can just go to Edit, Macros, and click in Export All Vision. Remember to select what you want to export with the edit marks. This file is saved in our project folder, here. The other option is to render the result by going to Output and just selecting the format that you want to use. We have as well the Dolby Mezzanine format, which is an MXF, that exports as well the metadata when you render the clips. Just remember that for rendering a proper Dolby Vision file, you need to use an RGB format with a color depth of 12 bits minimum. The exported metadata or any external metadata can be re-imported by just dragging and dropping the XML over my timeline. As you can see, the workflow is pretty easy. You just need to keep in mind some rules to avoid issues although Mystica will let you know if you make one of those mistakes with a warning message. So that's all. I hope you liked this tutorial and see you in the next video. Enjoy Mystica!